Rough Nation! Let's go! <laughs> if I yell too loud, it's going to make my head hurt again. Or is your voice gone? My or voice a is a little bit gone. My ears hurt from how loud the bar was. Yeah. But my heart is very full. It was an incredible night here at the DMBR bar last night. The Denver Nuggets are champions of the world. I, I'm pretty speechless, man. Um, I'll, I just I said this a lot last night, and I think I've said it before, but my whole life, up until every, in, honestly, until Nikola Jokic won MVP, there was a feeling out there that the Denver Nuggets could and would never win a championship. Mm -hmm. Like that was just like almost commonplace. Like it was just like a normal thing to say. Like, oh yeah, like God, we got the Broncos and the Avs because Nuggets and Rockies will never get one. Right. And then Nikola Jokic happened, and changed our lives he is something else watching him celebrate was just i know and and like there's a couple clips where he's like being very nonchalant people are like he doesn't even care it's like just look a little bit deeper yeah like two more videos and you'll find him dragging jamal murray into a pool right. or uh <laughs> you know like pouring a beer on kcp's head um i think honestly you can say that he is actually happier for his teammates than he is for himself oh absolutely which is crazy man it is he's, pretty crazy quite literally a unicorn in every facet and uh and the nuggets are champions and they are just getting started just getting started for sure um but it's fitting though the nuggets play team basketball the best brand of team basketball in the nba and are fittingly crown champions we're gonna have a parade thursday so no no show, show. <laughs> sorry now you know <laughs> um, Sean, we saw in the comments saying he's going to put a deposit down for the DMVR trip. Let's go. I haven't had a chance to talk about that on yeah. here yet. Um, we released it, what, Thursday? Yes. We released it Thursday. Uh, our official plans for the DMVR Fort Worth slash Dallas trip for the TCU game. It is going to be so sick. Um, last night, is, so I've had a take for a long time that uh my favorite thing to do in sports and my favorite like i'm always chasing this one thing mm -hmm. and it's when sports cause you to hug a stranger yes this is the best thing i think it's like the peak of life yeah is when something in sports causes you to hug a stranger uh and it happened a lot last night and yeah. like this tcu trip and honestly all these trips that we're gonna do like Although it changes the stranger part a little bit. It's just like, I can't wait to go down there, watch the game, watch the Buffs win, pour out, run into someone that's on the trip, give them a hug. Like, yep. it's, uh, it's just a beautiful thing. So um, sign up. Uh, use uh, the link. It's on our, all of our Twitter feeds. Um, I'll retweet it. You um, should honestly pin it Okay. Uh, on the Twitter page. So we'll, be, we'll pin it on the Twitter page. Let's go, baby. Hey. Champion. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. Fine. We're champions. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Merchel checking in. Um. Anyways, it is pinned on the profile now on the Buffs account. It's pinned on the profile, so we uh, there's a ton of different options. That's and that's the best part. Um, the more people you bring, essentially, the cheaper it becomes. Um, so check it out. Um, and, and look and find out what the best option is for you. There's a tailgate only price. The tailgate is all inclusive. That's all you can eat. All you yes. can drink. Uh, so let's do it. Yep. Let's hug some strangers. Let's do or it, Or less than strangers. For sure. Um, Buff's still 20 and a half point underdogs in that game. I saw over the weekend it moved to 21 for a day. I'm, uh, I'm excited about the Buffs because I would get to, re uh, like, restart the tour for respect. Yep. It's over for the Nuggets. <laughs> yeah. You're just starting <laughs> we, another one. Yes. We got our respect. <laughs> And even if we don't, I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. you just can't tell me anything. Uh, but the the Buffs Respect Tour is now on. And, yep. and I love a good Respect Tour, so let's go. Yep. Uh, I'm waiting till after the parade to officially say it. But it's football season. It's, yes. Sorry, sorry, Rockies. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, no, you should be saying sorry to us, Rockies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't forgive you for the Nebraska day you guys are holding. It's, it already happened, and they oh, lost. It did? Oh, um, fitting. It was very fitting. And apparently there was a great crowd. Um, nothing more Nebraska than a bunch of people going to watch a team lose. And supporting a team in a state that they don't live in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because they know how shit it is. <laughs> oh, all right. Please stop clapping. <laughs> We're watching film today. So loud. 
Um, yes, all pints. So um, I saw a lot of people on the tailgate uh, like freaking out over the price. It's all you can eat, all you can drink. We are literally hooking you up completely. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, when you package everything together, it makes everything a little bit cheaper than when you have to, when you buy things a la carte. Right. Yep. Um, okay, Brandon Davis Swain, he's up. Tape four, time. Four star defensive lineman. Is this like uh, when you have a substitute teacher in class and they play a movie <laughs> this is kind of what today so, is and then i take a nap <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but this is fun though <laughs> yes exactly rolling the tv it's like strapped I'm, into the thing <laughs> i'm going to the back of the classroom and hiding under a desk <laughs> um he's making some impact plays here like a lot of chase downs from the opposite side of the uh, defensive line he's like playing on the edge too 6'3", he's listed at 6'3", 263 now. Uh, so it's actually changed since he's committed. Is he playing offense? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why that's there. Number 11. Ooh. Violent at the he's, point of attack. He's really stout. Yep. That build is going to just... That's gonna ha that can handle a lot of weight. Yep. He's 240 right now? 263 now. Oh, okay. So... Where was the 240 number? That, that was, was so before they number? updated his page, his 247 mm -hmm. page, they just updated it. It must have been today so, or yesterday. Okay. I was going to say he kind of looks like 260. So Yeah. Um, but rushing off the edge, I didn't expect to see this as much because he is listed as defensive line, not edge. Yeah. The thing is, you got to play the edge when you're the best player on your team. That's true. <laughs> He's making an impact, though. He's batting down passes. Relentless wow, energy, all the man. Way around. Motor. And he wears number 11. It's my favorite number. Lawrence says he plays tight end as well. So that was probably was him we saw yep. catching a pass. Inside now. Yep. Looking at three tech, it looks like. Oh. It's not even close. Wait for it. <laughs> We're going to see that a lot today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, is that a sack? I you think throw so. It away? Oh my God, mm. <laughs> that's violent! <laughs> wow, what a read! It's a good football player. <laughs> that quarterback wants nothing to do with that block. <laughs> Trying to find his stats. Oh, uh, high school stats are just a pain. Look at man, he is—he's got a high football IQ. He does. Wow, he's like playing. What's he doing down safety? there? Safety? Oh, I think this oh, he's is a return. Blocking down there. Okay. Oh, just pancake him. He's really um, patient. Yep. Like you see some of these run plays, he's just sitting there waiting for the running back to make his move. Boom! Yeah. Quick shed, go make a play. He sees it so fast, he's already there before the play is like <laughs> yeah, even there. Exactly. He's just waiting. So yeah, listed. Um, you know the answer to site. that question, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say I was responsible last night. I left here before it got too crazy. I got the show ready. I'm not kidding when I say responsible is quite literally the last word anyone <laughs> would use to describe me last night. <laughs> but you're here. But I'm here. I guess that shows a little bit of responsibility. <laughs> yeah. I don't even... I think we got home at 3.30. That's wild. I think. Um, I realized after, like, I don't know, 30 minutes that no one was leaving here. So I was just like, all right, I'm just going to sneak out the back door here and just go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did it really? It was sick. I, 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 was, uh, I liked the way I played this one better than... Uh, than the Stanley Cup because I left too early last year because mm. I really wanted to get downtown and get in the mix. Right. Um, last this this year I stayed longer, and uh, and then still made it downtown. Yep. For some fireworks and other shenanigans. <laughs> All right, back to the tape. All right, um, <laughs> let's do a couple more plays here. We do have a bunch of visitors uh, visiting today that we'll talk about also. Um, let's do this last one. 
Is he standing? He looks massive from him, like how zoomed out it is. What is happening? I don't know. Is the video over yet? Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> They're just waiting for <laughs> yeah. the next play. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, all right, here we go. <laughs> What's he going to do? I, don't know. I was like, wow, this is a long snap count. <laughs> <laughs> um, next guy is Carl Lewis uh, or CJ Lewis, as his huddle said he goes by. Oh, what? Um, yeah. So that's a big difference. But this man find out the answer to that. is very, very shifty. Mossing guys in the corner of the end zone there. That must have been a big play. You know, you rarely see like big reactions from the sidelines. I feel like all these teams are too good. They're just used to it. Yeah. Look at this. Wow. This is crazy. Wow. Yeah. That was explosive. He so, was number one, too. Man, these guys have got good numbers. He's out of Carrollwood Day High School in Tampa, Florida. Look at the speed. Oh, my God. What was that defense? <laughs> it's like cover 14. <laughs> Working out of the slot almost exclusively. Wow. All right. That's some competitive fire right there. What? Yeah, he does. That is a great point. Mostly out of the slot. Right down the middle of the field. Ooh, a return. Is that a designed play? Yeah, it looked like it. He is so fast. Goodness gracious. <laughs> He's so fast. <laughs> what was that view? What are his specs again? So he's a bit smaller, 5'10", 160. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> I thought he was going to score on that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think I have the stats from when he's at Carrollwood Day. I think he may have just transferred there. Oh, that is actually a good time for the PSA, that if you're listening to this in podcast form. Yeah, check out the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to this in podcast form... You're not going to have a good time. <laughs> You've probably already figured that out by now. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. All right. So Adam posted this uh, just today. Headline, Colorado successful in, in impressing Florida blue chip duo. Talking about Zakarl Lewis and Charles Lester III. They came out to Boulder with Denzel Nickerson, who is their head coach of their 7v7 team, Prime hmm. Truth. He's also the pass game coordinator and receivers coach at Venice High. Oh, right. Okay. Um, which is where Charles said he was transferring to, yes, right? Yes, or alluded to. Oh, my God. Um, so Coach Nickerson was there at the visit, um, was with them the whole weekend. He said, we were blown away. The backdrop of Folsom Field, it just didn't feel real. I was telling our guys <laughs> and the coaches there every so often, man, we are really in Colorado. In Florida, it is a lot of green, but it is flat. I guess we have some hills here, but nothing to the magnitude. It was beautiful. Just an amazing trip. That's so cool, man. It's really cool to hear these types of quotes um, uh, about Boulder. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It, every year, there's people coming through that haven't seen it before, but it feels like it's like on 100 now yep. that are just like almost like seeing it i don't maybe there's something to it that like it's not the only th attraction anymore that makes it more like whoa right like when when you're coming to boulder in the last five years it's like the only thing you hear about it mm -hmm. is oh it's beautiful right uh, in terms of a football you know in terms of the football team um now it's like oh they're coming for coach prime and then oh my god this is beautiful you know what i mean yeah. like it's not the the main attraction right. and that makes it more like shocking. Yeah, they're almost kind of surprised by it like yeah. when they get here. Yeah. Um it was a beautiful weekend though. I was up there on Saturday, man. It was actually sunny. Just a beautiful day out. What were you doing on Saturday? Uh, I was hanging out with some friends out there. That's awesome. I had a couple buddies who did the uh Iron Man up there. Oh, right. I yeah. heard about that. I was just chilling. <laughs> 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 um all right, thank you. Uh, thanks, Yaya. Um, real quick, a couple more quotes from Nickerson. He said, uh, talking about Zakaro, because he obviously committed. Um, I actually have some stats here. 21 other P5 offers. He's accounted for more than 2,000 yards of offense and 18 touchdowns on varsity at Carrollwood Day. He caught 88 passes and had 64 rushing attempts. Wow. So almost 150 touches. Um, so Nickerson said, Colorado's plan is to use Zakaro similar to how we use him. We have found creative ways to get him the ball. We line him up in the backfield, use him in the slot, obviously. 
Line him up as a kickoff punt returner, dynamic returner because of his first and second step quickness. It's a crazy electric burst. Off the field, he's cooler than the other side of the pillow, but on the field, he's a very fierce, fierce competitor, and it shows on the tape. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. A little bit of Debo in some of those runs. Yeah. Um, obviously not quite as big, but yeah, I mean, this Sean Lowe's offense is going to attract a lot of guys like that. Yep. And that's good news for the buffs. I mean, you get your Javon Antonio's and, and that'll be great too. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get a chance to react to that video on here, but my God, yeah. <laughs> what a horse. Yes. Um, and then you just fill it in with these explosive guys and those explosive guys are going to flourish in this offense. Tell me who this quote reminds you of. You know the phrase lightning in a bottle? Zakarl is a little bit of lightning and thunder in a bottle. He not only runs around and away from people, he runs through them as well. People don't believe that he has ACLs because of the moves he makes. It hurts me sometimes watching the cuts he makes. His nickname is Flash. Wow. Uh, I didn't see that as much on the tape. That being said, it sounds a lot like Jerry Judy. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Um, said he's gonna. he wants to put on some weight, get around 175, 180. Um, but he's also a track guy, so he's got that to kind of balance while in high school. Um, he talked about Coach Shad and Coach Bartoloni. Uh, Coach Nickerson did. He said Colorado's done a good job of building a relationship with him, him being Zakarl. Coach Rashad is a good friend of mine, a friend of the family as well. He came over to Colorado from Jackson. And then once Zakarl got to Colorado, he just felt at home. Coach Brett Bartoloni, the receivers coach, also made him feel right at home from the moment he got there. I told him, if it feels right, why not? And everything just felt right. It checked every box for him. Colorado is just a great overall fit for him. Hell yeah. That's awesome. I mean, man, there's recruiting is crazy and there's so many twists and turns. Yep. But right now, it feels hard to believe that Charles Lester won't be a buff too. Right. Uh, on that, he spoke about him. Again, Coach Nickerson said, Charles' best weapon is his ability to run routes. <laughs> because with him being able to run routes, he's able to understand it from a defensive standpoint. Mm. It makes him one or two steps ahead because he knows what receivers are trying to do. He knows the counter moves to the releases and the route transitions. His hip drive is amazing. He's another guy where his change of direction is completely elite, and he has those long arms. Uh, he was asked about uh, when Charles is going to make a decision. He said he's getting closer to a decision. He's just going to get a true feel for it. He's not in a rush to make it. Like I tell all my guys, it is a 20-year decision. Now when you know, you know. But some people, it takes them a little longer to figure out and know, and that's not a problem, especially with a guy of Charles's caliber because he can kind of take his time and make sure it's right. Uh, shout out Adam Monster Tiger above Stampede. Great quotes from Coach, by the way. Yep. Uh, and great job by Adam to, uh, to get him on the record because mm -hmm. that was really great insight. Yep. All uh, right. New partner today. Ooh. Say hello to Omaha Steaks. The only thing we like about Omaha. <laughs> exactly. It's the only <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Peyton well, Manning just saying said it the word. The line. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's Father's Day coming up this weekend. Dads want steak. Omaha Steaks have you covered. For a limited time, when you go to omahasteaks.com, enter the code. Sorry, I need to find the code. <laughs> It just says insert code. I don't know what our oh, code no. is. Oh, no. DNVR or DNVR buffs? All right. DNVR buffs. DNVR buffs. We're um, trusting Yaya on this one. Into the search bar. Uh, you'll be able to order the dad's favorite gift package for just $99.99. Uh, plus, you get eight free Omaha State burgers with that. So in this package, you get four bacon wrapped fillets, four premium all air chilled boneless chicken breasts, four boneless pork chops, Four Jumbo Franks, four made from scratch caramel apple tartlets, and I heard that those are like the best thing. That There's they have. so much good stuff in there, um, and of course Omaha steak seasoning. They've got these potatoes au gratin. Yeah, they're so good. I need the hookup. So I need to try. <laughs> Go to omahasteaks.com and type uh, DMVR buffs into the search bar, and order the dad's favorite gift package for Father's Day today. That's an easy way to get out of thinking about a father's oh, yeah. gift. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it'd be an easy gift for my dad. Yep. So uh, if he sees that show up this weekend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> also, um, some Shador's number two. With and that, with, yep. well, speaking of Shador's number two, oh. shout out to our guy and the best barbecue sauce out there. 
Uh, you can go to plbse.com. It really is currently my favorite barbecue sauce. No joke. Same here. <laughs> and I'm out. I need another bottle. So uh, <laughs> let's go. Sales, please help. Use code all city, all caps, all one word at checkout for 10% off your order. Shador's number two. Um, and then real quick, uh, we've got our own Father's Day stuff going on. Our Father's Day uh, merch sale, dmbrlocker.com. Buy one, get one 50% off. Shirts, hats. Does the is the championship Don't collection? Know. The, I doubt it. Uh, <clears throat> but you can get a SCO shirt. You can get the uh, the DMVR hat I've got on. Maybe some Broncos gear. No Coast Bias shirt. That's a great one, too. Hell, yeah. There's so many new shirts, though. The, the whole championship collection slaps. It does. It's pretty amazing. D line went in. <laughs> and like some of them are super inside jokes, which I love. Like right. they're for us. Mm -hmm. Then there's also just the ones that are like for everyone. Yep. I have also, um, I'm hoping that I can get them all in black. That's me pulling my rank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just need to make an RK collection. Yeah. Every shirt. In every black. shirt in black. <laughs> That's sick. I bet it'll sell. It probably would. <laughs> all right, we have one more tape to watch. Uh, this one's fun. Michael oh, Welch. Wait, really? One more thing on the Nuggets. Okay. Probably not the last thing. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just love something I love about the NBA. Is that when you win the championship, you just get covered in black and gold? Yep. They're just like, here's a black and gold hat, here's a black and gold shirt. It's great. It's a lot of fun. The championship merch is uh like the team merch was fire too. Yeah. Uh, rarely can you say that. Like I, know. <laughs> I might drive around today and try and find a store that has one of those shirts. Yep. Um, I saw someone say they just got some Shadors in the comments. Let's go. Mac Millie. Let's go. Enjoy, man. Oh, Alpine got his too. Going on the barbecue tonight. Awesome, man. Boom. All right, let's watch Michael Welch. The 4A Georgia Player of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, returns kicks, is a running back. He's a big running back too. And uh, we're going to see a little bit of everything from him in this. I mean. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, that looked like a clash of the titans. Like, <laughs> both teams just running full speed at yeah. each other. Yep. From Baldwin High School in Milledgeville, Georgia. 59210. Like Braveheart. <laughs> Look, for 59210, that's some wheels, man. Yeah, he moves. It is so interesting. Um, it's probably a combination of Coach Prime and sean lewis but they like very much have a type when it comes to mm -hmm. like all positions yep my god <laughs> Look at that. i mean he dusted him by like 20 yards good i mean he looks as fast as the carl lewis <laughs> i know all right last year 226 carries for 1373 yards just bouncing runs off <laughs> off the outside here He's too good for these boys. Get him up to wow. 5A, 6A, or 7A. Wow. <laughs> and then he breaks away with the speed at the end. That's Goodness special. Goodness gracious. That is man amongst boys. 1,373 yards. He had 16 touchdowns. This is as a junior. <laughs> Last year as a sophomore, two years ago as a sophomore, 988 rushing yards for 19 touchdowns on 140 carries. Oh, he my God. <laughs> <laughs> it looks NFL blitz, like no. bodies just fly out of there, and here he comes out of the pile. He averages six foot six point four yards per carry in his career. Average wow. six point one oh, yards per carry last year. Yep. I formation, love it. Just pound the rock, man. Just so ever, if everyone's keeping score at home. <laughs> There's yet to be a highlight on here that wasn't a touchdown. <laughs> this is insane. Every single play is a touchdown. Uh, averages over 120 yards per game last year. And his career averages over 106 yards a game. Whew. How, he's, it, the, I, the only thing that is holding him back from being a four-star has to be like the level of competition. I was just about to get to that. I think that just judging here, he should be a candidate to be a four-star after he, the season. He absolutely should. Um, but he's just like dominating... And I don't, I'm sure 4A in Georgia is better than 5A in Colorado. Oh, for sure. Um, but he's dominating. Yeah. 
Like it looks a little too easy for him. Yeah. I feel I feel like the evaluators would probably be like, yeah, like it's hard to tell. <laughs> right. He is a beast. And I still think there has not been a highlight on here that isn't a touchdown. <laughs> um, he's got a lot of them in his career. He's got 39 rushing in his career. He's got four receiving in his career. 39. Yeah, this is this is a highlight tape of 39 touchdowns. Yep. <laughs> I love these Full power house. formations. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. Now out of the shotgun. Wow. <laughs> he literally cannot be stopped. He just decides, I'm going to score a touchdown running up the middle this time. I'm telling you, that that's the only reason why they're not calling this guy a four-star. Because if he was doing this, I don't know, at like the highest levels, he would be a five-star. Right. I think we're going to see a lot of speed, strength, change of direction, vision, agility, toughness, explosion, toughness. He's showed every single thing you could ever ask from a running back in this four minute tape. I think um, (laughs) we're going to see a lot of improved rankings from what we have in this class so far. Aaron Butler. Oh, he finally got tackled. It is possible to tackle him. (laughs) Aaron Butler is, is he someone... just lined up at punter? Sorry. You're good. <laughs> I think he was. Was that a fake punt? I think he... Yeah, rewind it a sec. I'm pretty sure it was a dropped snap on a punt. Yeah, it's after this. No, it's not. Now we're too far forward. Too late. We've lost the moment. Oh, <laughs> right there. No, never mind. This one's fun to watch again anyway. Let him erase those angles. I think we could see a lot of guys though improve their rankings. Talon Chandler has been like a two-time state champion. Um, Aaron Butler, we already know what he's capable of. We got guys in Eric Brantley Jr. out in Georgia on the defensive line too. Here it is. Who are fringing on four stars. I Maybe think that's that was a, sh- a deep shotgun. Yeah, snap. shotgun snap that got dropped, and he just picked it up and took it to the house. <laughs> Where's the defense though? Uh, Danny O'Neill, a lot of people have said he should be a four-star. If he has a great season, mm. he could be one. That's a good point from uh, Gear, who says they underrate short backs. There, There's a lot of really good running backs in the country, mm-hmm. and I bet they just start with, like, the 6'2 guys. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, is this guy a five-star? And they just, like, work their way down. Stacy Gage, he was, I think, a little bit bigger than uh, yeah. Michael Welch was. I mean... CU fans will know this as good as anyone. The size does not always uh, translate. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you had Daryl Scott come in, highest rated player in program history before Travis Hunter. And he wasn't that good. Then on that same team, you had a unrated Rodney Stewart who ended up being, you know, the best back of that era. So sometimes these small guys are just... Dogs. (laughs) Dogs. <laughs> that was a wild play. <laughs> oh my god! Catching passes now. Get out of there! Ah, uh, this guy's a freak. He's awesome. Uh, and this is a long video, so we can you can pull the, the plug on this one whenever you want. But all right, last one. Um, and almost a touchdown. All right, so a couple other notes we have to hit today. I think we got a commitment of sorts yesterday. Okay. From Andy Etok. Okay. Um, he just tweeted out, I kept going and never lost faith even when I could have. Now I'm a buff. And in his Twitter bio, it says, DB at the University of Colorado. I could not find a 247 sports page. And I couldn't find really much on him. But Chidobe Awuzie quote tweeted him and said, Lil Cuz a buff now. Dope. So. All right. Maybe walk on. Probably a walk on. That's what, yeah, I'm assuming. Maybe from the camp? Could be. Um, let me try and see. Yeah, I, he doesn't say where he's from. Um, so we'll have to dig a bit deeper on him. But I guess he's coming. Let's go. Uh, as I mentioned, lots of guys visiting today. 
today. Today. Today. <laughs> yes. They like staying around for the parade or what's I, going on? It's a lot of young kids too. Okay. Um, LeMason Waller, probably the headliner. We've talked about him quite a bit. Is he related to Darren Waller? I do not know. It doesn't say so on 247 Sports. Okay. Um, while you do that, I'll tell you about him. He's a four star, 247 Sports composite four star athlete out of Sultana High School in Hesperia, California, 6'2, 170, class of 2025. Two way player, plays wide receiver. Last year as a sophomore, caught 64 passes, 1,057 yards, and 15 touchdowns. Also added 36 tackles and two INTs. He does have a crystal ball to Michigan that he earned in, or he was given in March. But again, this is a 2025 kid, so it does not really matter at this point. He are he had previously been committed to Washington. Um, That's what I just found when I was searching to find out if he was related to Darren. Maybe a while ago. All right. Well, um, doesn't look like he is related to Darren Waller. Okay. Um, he just visited the weekend after the spring game. Okay. And so now he's back. Interesting. Another guy visiting is Fatu Makuba. 5'11", 170-pound wide receiver out of LBJ High School in Austin, Texas. No stars, no rankings, hmm. um, but has offers. 247 says he has at least 12 offers. Colorado's in there. K-State, uh, Tulane, UTSA, UConn. A lot of lower-level offers at this point. He is 2024. Um, his brother is a safety at Clemson, Andrew Makuba. Okay. Xavier Owens is also visiting. This is a 2026 wide receiver out of Bishop Alamanny High School in Mission Hills, California, 6'1", 150. Um, again, only a handful of offers. Eight, according to 247, Colorado, Michigan State, Tennessee, though, amongst others. So he's in town. Ali Scott is also in town. He's the quarterback at LBJ High School. So teammates mm. with um, Fatu Makuba. I believe it's Fatu. Fatu. <laughs> uh, um, awesome. What a weird random midweek visit day. Yeah. A lot of, I told you, a lot of young kids. So Ali Scott, 2025 uh, quarterback, only has four offers. Campbell, Grambling State, North Alabama, UNLV. Uh, Jelani Culpepper is on campus. We talked about him before. 2027 athlete. I don't even think he's in high school yet. Related to Dante? Um, maybe. This is my contribution to the show. I just hear a name I recognize <laughs> and ask if it's if they're related to him. Do you know where Dante Culpepper's from at all? By chance? Where he went to college or anything? Mm. That's a little before my time. No. Anyways, Jelani's from Georgetown, Texas at Eastview High School, 5'9", 160, 2027 athlete, has at least 12 offers already, uh, Florida State, Colorado, Indiana, so he's got heavy Power 5 interest already as a 2027 recruit. Well, as Dante Culpepper's son, maybe, right. that would make sense. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Florida Ah, uh, so... Probably not then. Probably not. Yeah, I don't even think this kid's in high school yet. He wow. would be starting as a freshman, I think, in August. That's crazy. Last guy, Tylen Johnson uh, from Adelanto, California, Adelanto High School. 2025 athlete, 5'10", 153. He has a 247 sports ranking of three stars. He's the 80th athlete in the class. He's got... At least eight offers. Of course, Colorado's in there. Uh, Arizona's in there. Fresno State. A few other lower-level schools. But that's it. So quite a few guys, young guys, but they're all visiting this today. Very interesting. I wonder what the uh, thought process is behind that. I oh. would love to hear that from Coach Prime. Speaking of Coach Prime, the Joel Klatt thing, I watched it yesterday amazing hell yeah can't wait to watch it yeah hell yeah that's awesome um speaking of coaches uh-huh 
Did you see the interaction between Barstool Colorado and Kenny Dillingham? Oh my god, I did. <laughs> yes. That was so weird. <laughs> oh, it was great. So, Barstool Colorado <laughs> tweeted out when it was hailing the other day. It's, we've got we got so we've had a couple crazy storms in the last week or two. And Kenny Dillingham retweeted it, which was super weird. Um and so then <laughs> Barstool screenshots him retweeting it, and they're like, LOL, like, bro's trying to use our weather against us in recruiting, um, which is the best theory for why he would have retweeted that. Mm -hmm. And then he quote tweets them and says, no, I'm just vacationing in Colorado, and I thought the weather was crazy. It's beautiful here. I love it. <laughs> it's like, wow, what a, what a turn of events. I know. And I wanted to hate him. I, I almost wish he kind of <laughs> leaned into it a I bit know. more. He's like, never seen hail in Tempe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was, um, I just love that. Uh, I feel like Arizona State tries to pick at Colorado and Coach Prime just a little bit, just enough, but they're not quite there to like warrant the full clap back, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was funny, though. It was a likable interaction from Kenny Dillingham, who I've met and no disrespect, just seems like he would be more likely to be sitting in one of these chairs with us than coaching a college football right. team. Yep. <laughs> he is a young guy. Oh, yeah. he's. I think he's younger than me. I think so. It's crazy. I know. All right. Get to your guys' questions. But first, a word from our friends at Illegal Pete's. This episode of the DMVR Buffs podcast is brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Um, after all the partying last night, I think Illegal Pete sounds amazing today yeah sounds like we did just bring what in i need some celebratory donuts for the office you for did. the morning but I appreciate you gonna need that uh legal pete's later yeah for sure uh legal pete's has extended happy hours all throughout the summer 3 p.m to 8 p.m every day at all 12 locations get yourself a margarita a beer bucket legal pete's our go-to spot for burritos buddies and beers Looks like Dusan is checking in potentially from Ser Serbia. Let's go. Just like probably hopped on the channel like, what's DNVR <laughs> yeah. up to right now? <laughs> Congrats, Dusan. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just like, That's yeah. true. He's probably still partying. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, speaking of partying, how much Breck Brew do you think was consumed here last night? Well, we set all-time records for sales at the bar by a lot. So a lot. <laughs> I heard that we ran out. We legitimately ran out of Breck Brew. No way. That's so epic. <laughs> You're like, what, what do you have? <laughs> so these might be the only four Damn. avalanche ambers in the entire building. And they wow. were hidden in the fridge over there. Wow. They, that was empty when we got they, here. You know what happened is so when I left here, because I went downtown, then I came back here. When I left here, they were still going strong. <laughs> oh, my God. So they probably ran out of all beers and then saw these and were like, we got to refrigerate. We got to refrigerate these. Yep. That's hilarious. Um, Yeah, it was pretty amazing here last night. Uh, Anyway, shout out to Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, most days you can get them here, but uh, we may have to wait for another uh, shipment. We need a delivery. <laughs> uh, you could try some of our favorites, the Avalanche Amber Ale, Vanilla Porter Jr., Fun Slinger. You can go to www.breckbrew.com. Use their beer locator to find a Breck Brew near you. Um, the post-game show for the Nuggets last night. I saw you hop on. Yeah. I could tell you were, uh, <laughs> you were partying. Feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> But, I was uh, on for, you know, I took my uh, 15 seconds yeah, and enjoyed it while Brendan was uh, using the restroom. <laughs> yeah. Brendan was, I mean, he was hilarious last night. When Harrison got in, too, on the show, the oh, vibes man. just amazing. I got to watch it. I heard it was two and a half hours long. It was. It was it's really like a, long. It's like the extended <laughs> season finale. It, there's a, it takes a turning point about halfway through where it just becomes a party. Yes. <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, what do we got on tap today? Uh, Lawrence, did a preferred walk-on commit yesterday? Yeah, um, that was the guy we talked about. Yep. Already forgot his name. Um, Etok? 
yes, uh, Ali Etok or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Lots of names. All right. Um, from, you're good. Angela, if Sean Lewis goes five wide, how would you line up C wide receivers? Travis and J5 on the outside. Oh, man. Starting like probably if you're putting five out there, jo Javon Antonio is going to be one of them. Yep. Um, so uh, he's going to be one of the outside guys. Mm -hmm. um, I would put Jimmy inside of him. Yep. Um, Dylan Edwards. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe inside of him or on the other side. Uh, and then you've got Travis. Is that four? Yep. And one more. Omari and Miller. Let's go. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. The options are vast. Um, I mean, throw Willie Gaines on there for the speed. Yeah. Yep. Throw Torvars Dawson. I mean, there's so much speed. Yeah. They can just come at you in waves with the speed. Um, I mean, you could even throw, you said uh, Dylan Edwards. I mean, you could split out a big tight end. You could put out another big receiver. Yep. They're going to be I, very multiple. It's not, um, certainly not a staple of the Sean Lewis offense, but I would like to see them do some five wide. Mm -hmm. Maybe bring in a little of that Bartoloni. Yeah, the, um, the air raid. Air raid concepts, because those five wide concepts is all about your quarterback just looking out there before the snap and being like, okay, what's my matchup here? Right. And Shadur is going to be so good at that. Yep. And if you go five wide and you're just going to have, like maybe it is um, Jimmy Horn in the slot. And he looks and he's just like, okay, well, he, that the corner has to play 10 yards off of him because they're scared of his speed. Mm -hmm. So just run five yards to turn around and I'll hit you. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be able to create some matchup nightmares for sure. And no one, there's legitimately no player in the country I would rather have finding those matchups than Shador. Yep. Uh, Christian asks, does the DMV bar have... Uh, Slivovitz. I don't know what that left is. Leftover after the Nuggets win last night. That is a Rakia company. Ah, uh, okay. Um, or manufacturer, however you want to call it. But no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, no. We had a like half-price Rakia for yeah. from like four to six and i'm pretty sure it was gone after that yeah the place uh needs some more liquor needs some more beer it's got confetti everywhere i honestly think that we might start like rakia being a thing yeah it's good i legitimately like it i need to try it still yeah so um, when they when the boys went to serbia they came back with like the good stuff yeah i was like i, I would happily sip this after dinner huh it was, it's delicious what's it made from it's depend. It can change, but the most, I believe, I can be wrong on this. Most traditional form is plum brandy. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it's got a nice little sweetness to it. I'll need to try. I'm usually not a big like, just straight liquor drinker, but yeah. Well, you can just take it as a shot. Well, I I was told that that's not the way to do it. It's though. not. <laughs> it's not. But when you're in the bar uh, for the NBA finals, that's true. Everything's a shot. <laughs> that is true. Angela's asking, why are teams playing Lewis one-on-one, -on -one, uh, no RB help? What does that mean? Um, oh, Zakarl. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, there's only so many, so much space you could defend. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's going to be the issue with this. We just talked about it with this offense. There's only so much space, so many things you can do. In the whole, I know I've said it a million times, the whole offense is predicated on what are they trying to take away, do the other thing. Yep. And you can't take away everything. And if your quarterback can put the ball in the right places, mm -hmm. that's how you have an unstoppable offense. Yep. And then you have an absolute freight train in the backfield in Alton McCaskill. There's, there's a chance even we are sleeping on them. There is. <laughs> he looked good in the well-off videos. He's still wearing a brace, but he's jumping. Looks explosive. Awesome. Uh, Key's asking, who's your favorite 24 commit so far? Do you have another one after Aaron Butler yet, or is that still? My favorite 2024 commit is Boo Carter. <laughs> Let's go. Saturday. <laughs> that is not breaking news. Saturday. Uh, I'm just kidding. I hope I hope it's him. Um, but Aaron, Aaron Butler, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Aaron Butler, for sure. Uh, shout out to Talon, though, our guy. I'm changing my pick. <laughs> Talon is the one. Yeah. He's the gift that keeps on giving, quite literally. 
That dude, I mean, we hope he has a long and fruitful playing career. Yes. But uh, the second he hangs it up is. the cleats, he could be an elite college football recruiter. Yeah, we need him as uh, at CU. Yep. Off the field and in, into the uh, coach's room. Yep. MLN, can we sanction a ping pong match between Rule and Prime? Oh, I'm taking Prime all day. All day in that, man. <laughs> I would rather see like an Oklahoma drill. <laughs> Uh, coach can't really run right now. I he would still smoke Matt Rule. He probably would, but <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> the H family on the latest RDP video, there was a debate between Dylan and Breedlove about what the three hardest football positions are, offense or defense. What are the hardest positions to play in your opinion? Okay. Number Outside a quarterback? Quarterback. Right. Um number two, cornerback. Mm-hmm. Number three, tackle. Yep. I throw edge rusher in there too. Yes, that would probably be four. Um, although, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of responsibilities on linebacker. Mm -hmm. Whereas edge, you're kind of just beat your guy. Uh, another one I throw out is especially with what we've seen from this team is tight end. To be a complete tight end, how hard yeah. that is. Yep. You're an offensive lineman and a receiver. Yep. And you have to learn both and be proficient in both. Yep. Yeah, that's that actually might be my four. But top three are quarterback, cornerback, and tackle. And honestly, tackle could be number two. For sure. Um, I would never, ever, ever want that job. Yep. I mean... Yeah. Who? Center. Center? Oh, yeah. Center's a hard one, too. Um, tackle, man. I'm actually worried that... Football is going to break in like the next 30 years because the edge rushers just keep getting so much better. Yeah. And no one wants to play tackle anymore. Like if right. you're big um, now, obviously there are certain body types that like you're just built to be a tackle. But I don't know. I feel like the athleticism that uh, of the players that are becoming edge rushers is scary. And it's already becoming like highly unbalanced. There's not a lot of great tackles in the league, and there's tons and tons of great edge rushers. It's just, I mean, it's so hard to play. Look at how many guys who have the size and the strength to play tackle don't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's extremely difficult. And you're just, every player that goes into like high school <clears throat> who's big and strong and fast and explosive, they're just like, oh, yeah, you should play edge rusher. Like, yep. All you need to do is get 10 sacks or make $10 million. Yep. <laughs> um, next one, yeah, yeah. 406, goalie. We know any more about Coach Prime's health issue that caused him to miss the camp in the South? Uh, I don't know. Hope he's doing well, though. Next one. Sean, first take Shannon Sharp and Skip comments on CU. Said they do not expect CU to win this year in two years. Um... But right now, they won't be successful. Your thoughts? Sleeping. I mean, everyone is. Yep. They're sleeping. Um, I guess, it, again, it all comes down to what's your definition of success. Because I talked to, you know, people close to the program who were like, we were just throwing out win totals. And I, I talked about like four, and they were like, wow, four would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, like people say this stuff, like, they're only going to win four games. They don't realize that's an improvement. <laughs> a, a big improvement. I, I can't get there on four. Four wouldn't uh, scratch the itch for me. Yeah. But five would feel like strong and serious progress, uh, and like, oh man, we were that we were that close to a bowl game. Mm -hmm. Six unequivocal success. Coach Prime talks about this with Joel Klatt, and it's a. Uh it's great, specifically when he talks about expectations for the TCU game. Watch that and try not to be fired up. Let's go. Cheryl's asking, Vito has been there for a while. I'm assuming he's cleared. I wish they'd show him on camera. Didn't have an injury, did he? Yeah, he tore his ACL last year. He missed the entire season last year. Mm. So he's him, Alton McCaskill. Um, they're all in the same boat. or both in the same boat. Let's go. Demoy Kennedy, I guess, too. I don't know if his was ACL, but... Williams asking, when will we see Jack Bailey and Chance Main working out with the team? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I Neither don't do know. I. Stay tuned. 
Uh, Mac I don't Millie. know what this means. Did you guys notice Bucky has been catching slack for coming at Jimmy a certain way during the hailstorm? Um, <laughs> so yesterday's well off. They the ha- it was hailing in Boulder. Yeah. Um, it was like right around when we were live or right after we were live, and they were clowning, you know, pushing people. Hey, you go out in the hail. You go out in the hail. I guess. And uh, <laughs> Jimmy was uh, Bucky was on him saying like, you know. All the real goats go out there and practice in this. Like, oh my god! <laughs> all, you think Coach Prime wasn't out there practicing in this? Oh <laughs> like, my god! Obviously, kind of joking. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. It was funny. Um, when I was at the tournament this weekend, yeah, it started hailing in the middle of our round. Oh god! <clears throat> which I played really well on Friday. I did not play well on Saturday. But the one cool thing I did: ninth hole in the hail. 25 footer for birdie wow <laughs> and then we went so like i i literally took a towel and was like trying to towel yeah. off my line um because i was like oh let's just finish this hole and then we'll yeah. go in <clears throat> and then we went inside and had a one hour hail delay the boys were already having a good time yeah that took things to a whole other level <laughs> um but that reminded me of what you were just talking about because i looked while the hail was coming down like at its peak I looked out, there's just some guy on the range, like getting swings in. I was like, wow, what a grinder. <laughs> yeah, that's what Bucky's talking about, yes, right? Exactly. There. <laughs> Did you finish the back nine? Mm-hmm. Nice. Eric's asking who's scarier, the offense or defense? Scarier, I would say offense. Yeah. But the defense is going to be what makes this team good or even better than right. good. I feel like there's a lot we need to learn about the defense before we can call them scary. The thing about the Pac-12 this year especially is like everyone kind of has a good offense. Right. And that's where the Buffs were just like doomed previously. It's like, yep. okay, well, you're not going to be able to compete with any of these teams. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've talked about it so much. If Cormani is as advertised, and you can just put Travis and Cormani on the outsides and play press man, there's not a lot you can do. No. Like, good luck. If you have good press man corners, good luck. Big corners, too. Yep. Marion Cooper. Uh, original, if Colorado wins a natty first year, RK has to get a tattoo that says primetime. I'll get a tattoo, but not that. <laughs> yeah, original <laughs> said it. <laughs> I love Coach Prime a lot. Just not, I'm not putting another man's nickname on it as a tattoo on my body. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, oh, man. Any Carmani sightings? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> Me either. It's early. We're, again, we're spoiled with the access we have to this team. A lot of people never know when any of their recruits or players show up on campus. Oh, yeah. It'll oh, happen. Yes. It'll happen. Uh, Vel's asking who will be our fourth down and a dingling back. Is that your... That's uh, fourth and short. Got to have learned. it back, right? Um, there's a, I don't know. There's d- pe- Different coaches have different philosophies on this. I'll see what, what Sean Lewis thinks. A lot of guys... Obviously, the... Um, Conventional wisdom is give me a big back who can move the pile a little bit. Mm-hmm. But there's been more of an of an insurgence of people saying, like, give it to the speed back and let him just get the ball quickly and kind of yeah. just knife through. Um, so we'll see. Um, so, yeah. Also, maybe just Shador. There you go. Low read option. Yeah, well, no, just Jalen Hurts style. There you go. Guys, I mean, when you're talking about fourth and dingling, you're not talking about speed. But the guys out there, like, leading some of these uh, – conditioning drills when they're running with the team i don't know who he's running in the same heat with but yeah you'll see him out there winning sports geek asking where's leonard Payne? i don't know guys i'm sorry (laughs) um i don't know how do you guys keep track of this i i'm still like (laughs) learning faces again and people are wondering exactly where exact guys are so like when broncos practice starts especially in training camp like all the like old school journalists have their roster out right. out there checking off every <laughs> yeah. single player. Is that what you guys do with well off videos? You're like, okay, yep. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Cormani. Take and roll. <laughs> absent. <laughs> Travis present. 
<laughs> and I'm not even hating that. I just, I'm just impressed that yeah. you like have you know the faces and all that stuff enough to be able to like that guy's not there. Man, it's amazing the passion that Buff Nation oh. and these fans have for this team. It's it makes a it a lot thing. more fun. I mean, I don't know if there's another team in the country where the fans know the players' faces. That the players have only been here for a couple of weeks. Shit, they're telling me about players showing up. <laughs> I know, I know. That's what I mean. It's crazy, dude. It's incredible the uh, detail yep. at which you guys watch. Love you guys, man. Uh, business buff. Uh, Y'all see the Sanders KFC commercial that family eats together for real, for real. I think this is the commercial they were talking about. They were all working on together, obviously, as a family. This was like a month ago. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. What? Ali needed the keys. <laughs> to be honest, it was a dime. It was a dime. <laughs> It was, yeah. The hands team for Great sure. Great key placement. <laughs> oh, man. Key through a smoke hole. The key through a smoke hole. Let's go. Uh, All right. Um, Jordan says, I feel like y'all should know more than us if y'all are the journalists. I, I don't have time to watch videos right when they come out, man. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean. I'm sorry. Okay. Maybe, maybe we should. I try my best, man. I also don't call myself a journalist. I'm only speaking for myself. Yeah, your role's <laughs> a little different. I, I, I'm probably more of an entertainer than anything. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's true. It's true. What a show. That was fun. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. No idea what we'll talk about. We may have a guest, though. Ooh. We'll have to Looking forward to that. Figure that Sign out. up for the TCU trip. Let's party together. Do it. Pin tweet. I might DMBR not have it after puffs. the parade. I might not have a drink between now and then, but I'll be ready to party. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs.